I'm Daniela Diorio with WebV Guide, and this is Rob Gokey. Hi. And he is a famous composer like Beethoven. <laughs> yes. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Except without Beethoven's talent. What, why the hell I'm are you good. in my I'm just... Why the hell are you in my kitchen? <laughs> I'll just leave, I guess. Yeah, okay, bye. And don't drink my wine! <laughs> I'm okay. Wow. It's fine. It's fine. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm a composer for TV, film, web. Uh, and commercials, and I've been doing this for about eight years. Eight years? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Um, since 2006, so I, I just lost track. Seven years, eight years. Whatever. Wow. I'm not oh good God. at math. It's okay, I'm not either. <laughs> You're good at music. That's all that matters. Actually, those two go together really well. Math and music? Music is, yeah, all math, basically. Really? Ugh. Well, I'm glad I'm not a musician. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've done, I've scored more web series than I can count, probably like three dozen, four dozen web series in the past, since 2009, so in the past wow. three or four years. Well, there are a lot of web series out there. There are a lot of web series out there. Um, one of which you're doing is in the works right now, producing Juliet. Right. Yes. With, with Tina Ward. Um, I worked with Tina back when she was still in Anyone But Me. I wrote, yeah. I, I knew Tina through the community, so yeah. like we had met and we'd been to events together. Um, and then they needed a song for, or a Q, one cue for anyone but me. Um, and I wrote them something, and then bestsellers came out, and then Tina was working on um, Good People in Love and Guards of Dagmar. And so I've worked with her on everything since then. So mm -hmm. we, it's nice because when Juliet comes along, like this is our fourth or fifth project together. Yeah. So we already have a shorthand. Like I know what she likes and what she doesn't like. Um, I know that she's generally like a minimalist when it comes yeah. to the score, so I don't want to overdo it. Um, and Juliet um, is a really rich show, and so I really like the way the score is coming along for the show and the way it's developing as the characters are developing. Because I, I feel like it's growing in the same way when you're a writer and you're writing and the characters kind of take over, the score takes over when, oh, um, yeah. when it's in the score. So it's cool, like I just let it go where it needs to go. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, I keep telling her she needs to keep making more episodes. Yeah, she should. Hey, Tina, make more web series, okay? All right, great. All right. Great. Anyway. You're going to write her a check. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to write, and I will write you a check because I'm a millionaire. Okay. Did you want me to write you a check, too? Because I'm assuming you're going to No, it's okay. I'll get one for Tina. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks. Um, so you've done commercials, you've done web, you've done television. Mm -hmm. What do you prefer? TV. Yeah? I, yeah, TV is the reason I got into this. Um... I I was a fan of Buffy. I, I've always I played an instrument since I was fifteen or sixteen. I was a guitar player first. Mm -hmm. um, I started playing with a friend who then got some guys together and it became a band. And then I realized I didn't like playing in front of people. Oh, I didn't want people watching me while I played. Oh. So I thought, what can I? And I was going to college. So I'm like, what can I do with a music degree that's not teaching like high school band mm. or um, playing in a in a rock band? And I was watching Buffy at the time, it was like season four, three, and started listening to the score and thought, wait a minute, that's, somebody's creating Doing that it. music. Yeah. Um, Buffy had a really, um, it had a really like rich score for that show. Like a lot of scores were very synthetic and Chris Beck used, um, there's a lot of like real sounding instruments and so it sounded like a movie score, so he did a great job. Um, and I started researching that and thought this is the path I want to take. And I've always loved TV over film. I love the serialization of TV. I like that in a whole season, a character can have some long 24 episode journey that they can take and then come back for another season. Um, as opposed to a movie where it's like two hours and you're done. And then you're done. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then maybe a sequel and that's it. It's just, it's funny because most composers want to do film and not TV. Um, mm -hmm. At least it used to really be that way. Like everyone looked down on TV. Like, oh, was really? inferior. Really? Yeah. And even as a, like, in back as, in like 2005, 2006, it was always like, oh, TV? You went to TV? No, real composers do film. Oh, but I, then, I had no idea that But then TV got really up. good. Then Breaking Bad happened, oh and God, like, AMC Bad. started to blow up, and HBO and Showtime had great shows, and then it, it, it shifted. So yeah. now everyone's excited about TV. Breaking Bad actually had a great soundtrack. Yeah, like, it did an I amazing mean, job. An amazing job. It's so, it was so different than yeah. everything else. It was so different. And, and it's funny, too, because um, people that didn't normally comment on the music of shows, like mm -hmm. friends of mine and stuff that aren't in the entertainment industry and web industry, 
they were like commenting on the music that I and I remember thinking, wow, like that's coming from you, like, and it like really like hit them. They had a lot of really cool songs in Breaking Bad, yeah. But they also like the score was was very ambient and it wasn't it was minimalist, like there, it wasn't big and like yeah. Well, like orchestral, it was. But it's it's also significant though. Like that you can like you can actually like you know. And it made the scene so like, uneasy. Like you just you're already uneasy, and then the score just made it worse. Mm -hmm. So if you did Dave Porter. Oh my god, just made yes. it go. Oh god, I miss that <clears throat> show so much. Yeah, I know. I like, really already. miss that show. Anyway, sorry, totally trailing off. So you prefer to compose for television, um, which is why I do web series. Which is why you do web series. In the same way that people make short films in the hopes that like their short film will lead them to a feature. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's like, oh, th oh, this is a short version of a feature script I wrote, and if people like it, then I'll get investors to make feature films. I looked at web series like, oh, look, it's independent television. And so if one of these shows hits, then maybe some of those people can move along if the show gets picked up by TV. Mm -hmm. Initially when... I started doing them in like 2009, mm -hmm. so I did every web series, like everybody I could find. I um, noticed you'd like know everyone. Well, I, was, I would go to networking events, yeah. which I never, I hate going to because I'm a composer, so I'm like introverted and I want to go hang out. And, but my wife is a producer and she's very good, so she's, she's like, no, good. we're going to this thing. And so I bitch and complain while I'm getting dressed, and then I go and then I have a great time, and then it's like my process, I'll bitch the next time we go. I but I realized I was the only composer showing up to anything. Mm -hmm. So then people would be like, hey, who's that guy that we met at that event? Or, or, or oh, you're the guy scoring so-and-so's web series. I don't know any other composers. Um, you want to score Yeah, mine? you want to score mine. That's oh. how I met David Nett um, when I did Night of the Zombie King for him, and then mm -hmm. I scored their feature that's just now being finished, Alice and the Monster. But, like, yeah, all those relationships are from going to... All the web series events. Wow. And it was really cool then because everybody, you'd go and then it was almost like a big hangout. Like you'd hang out with like 40 people that you, ever, you knew everybody. Mm. Um, and the first, that year ITV Fest was really, really cool because I met a lot of people that I knew from Twitter that I didn't know Really online. know uh, yeah. in real life. Yeah. Um, Isn't that weird? It is weird. Yeah. It used to be weirder. It, it's still weird to me. Like when I'm like, oh yeah, like I met you on like, and now like being that we're doing like all these like Google Hangouts and stuff. Like, right. I, you know, I've met, I've met Tina. I had met her before. I, I did a interview with her, but and Susan and but I had never met Rochelle. <coughs> but I met her on Google Hangout, and then and then, then you I met her went, in person. Yeah, and then I went to meet her in person, and we actually like really hit it off and hung out pretty much every single day in uh, London, which was like so much fun, and I can't wait to do it again next year because that's what we're going to do, and you're going to be free the whole week. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that was really clear. We put it out there. Yeah, I just want to put it out there, whatever. Um, but yeah, it's it's always like weird to me that I'm like, oh, like like I know stuff about you. That I shouldn't know because I don't know you. Yeah, I know exactly. my wife on Twitter. Did you really? Yeah, we met no. because she... she's a producer and I'm a composer, and we followed each other, and then she recommended me for some gig that she saw. And I said, we should have coffee so that um, you can tell me what you do so I know how to promote you too. And then we became friends for a little while, and then I realized I had a crush on her, so I asked her out. And then, and so, like, our entire relationship played out on Twitter. Wow. Um, and, like, half, three quarters of my groomsmen are all people that I, like, knew. Really? I, from Twitter, like, indirectly. I get so much work from there. Because I meet people on Twitter that are in L.A. or that are doing a show, and then... They want to meet in person. and we, Wow. Twitter's so fast. It's not, like, I remember MySpace. MySpace people would yeah, be like, nice. yeah, man, I'm making a movie. I want you to score it. I'm like, great, let's meet for coffee. Oh. Well, it's not really written yet. Like, or, like, people would just disappear if you tried to get them to meet in person. Yeah. Twitter's like, oh, I'm a producer. Like, I need a composer. You want to meet for coffee this week? Okay, great, let's go. Or we'll meet for lunch. And then... Um, and then there you are. Yeah. Um, I scored solo the series. It was the first web series I ever did. And I met Jonathan Nail... On Twitter, and we met on Twitter, and we were in person like two days later, and he's pitching me his show idea and asking me to score it. And it's not even fully written yet. Wow. Um, I mean, I was like, I'm in. That's But crazy. it was so crazy and cool. At the same time, I thought, this is weird. Like, how am I getting work online? That, I mean, I know that, like, we've gotten some, I mean, we've gotten some, we've gotten most of our work through, you know, online media and online mm. connections and stuff. I don't recall if it was Twitter. Uh, Twitter's played a role in it, but it's played it a role, but not quite like that. No, not I get quite. Stuff from Facebook that's the green. Occasionally, I, I really hate Facebook. I'm, I know I have to be there, but I'm. <laughs> Why do you hate Facebook? I uh, love it. It's just 
there's too many between the like weird articles and I don't know because I'm a Twitter person. Yeah. I'm very I come off when I go to Facebook. I'm just like ugh. I love Facebook <laughs> well, because I'm nosy. I'm really honestly. Well, Facebook's great for stalking. It's oh, better than Twitter. it's so great! It's so great, and I know everything. And just I'm so nosy. I'm so nosy. It's ridiculous. But um, yeah, I love it for that reason. Because I'm like, ooh, you got fat. That's what I say. <laughs> or you that. fall down a rabbit hole where you're like, why am I? Who's this random person? Yeah. Who's <laughs> looking yeah. At when you're a why do I? I don't even know them. Oh my god. Instagram is getting like that too a little bit. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I go through periods with Instagram. Like I keep it on the phone and then I'll ignore it for like a month. Yeah. And then I realize I haven't posted anything. And then I'll go through the stream and sometimes I'm excited and sometimes I'm like, yeah, I'm not really uh, missing anything. I mean, I guess Instagram though, like, wouldn't really help you because it's just pictures. Yeah, exactly. So, I try. You can't take pictures it, of music. No, and I thought about Instagram in that way, like, how can I use this business-wise? Like, if I'm yeah. going to do it, how can I leverage it? And it's, it's there's only so many photos of like what I'm scoring. But... <laughs> yeah, you're like, look at these notes. Although you can do video. That's true. Now you can do video. So I could have crappy audio sound <laughs> coming from my iPhone. <laughs> this sounds better in real life. I Come swear. See me. <laughs> Hire yeah. me, no. Hire okay. me, please. When we when we were at the streamies at the same time, I was there for a show called Prison Pals, which was made by two Australians who found me on Twitter and DM'd me and said, Hey, we need a composer, like you're the composer guy that everybody's talking about on like web series chat. So do you want to score our web series? We have money and like here so we we did a Google Hangout and Skyped and I scored the entire thing before I ever met them. Like, I scored it, they paid me, then they got nominated for a streaming, and they actually came out to L.A. It was their first time here. Wow. And it was the first time we met, which was weird, because we'd done business together. Yeah, already. exactly. And that, with Australia, so... it was odd, because they were like, let's meet. And I'm like, okay, what time is it there? Yeah. That's 11 p.m. here. I guess we can talk then. Yeah, I had to do that when, when we were doing all the interviews in, in London, when I was interviewing, like, Frankie, Marie, and and Rochelle and like you know I was like okay like is it okay can I can we do noon here and nine right. o'clock there are you okay with that like London's easier Australia is weird because you just you get too much further away yeah. and then you're into like the next day yeah they're in the future yes do they, they tell are. you stuff no like that you, like, you I know you should know. tell me like who won certain games yeah, or exactly well next time numbers. you know you're welcome um, I want the lottery winnings if you, you even know. a path Oh my god, really? Yeah, because the other half has to go to Tina so that she can make more producing Juliet. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> hey, Tina. Yay. Anyway, um, okay, so... And where are you with Ed and Pairings? I'm sorry? Ed and Pairings and Series. Were, that's, those are my two current projects, is Pairings... Pairings and... Juliet. Juliet. Mm-hmm. And which one do you like better? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Never asked. <laughs> producing Pairings. Tell me. <laughs> I'm just... Um... So, you were just recently in New York, though, and you, yes. you filmed, well, yeah, well filmed, they, shot, they, two more. they shot two more episodes of uh, Producing Juliet, Yes. and so you were on set for that. I was, I actually helped um, cook. He also cooks. Yes. I, um, they, they had a limited budget, and they were, the first time they had shot, they had gotten somebody to come out and, like, make food for them. This time they didn't have that option. They found out at the last minute. So oh. I didn't have anything else going on. It's not like I can write music when I'm, you know, on the other side of the, on the other coast as yeah. well. So it was like, I'll just cook for the Castle Group. It's only two days. Um, but yeah, I forget how much work it is yeah, to cook for 30 people. Yeah, it means a lot To of work. make them all like, I made them celery root soup and oh my um, God. chicken curry sandwiches. What the hell? Which are both Ed Robinson from Pairings' recipes. Um, that guy, I took out, did you see that interview? No, I, did I took not. out random things out of my fridge and out of my cupboard, and I told him to pair things together. <laughs> and he was like, okay. And he went, I mean, like, just random things. Like, I pulled out Weight Watchers chips, okay? <laughs> I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that, but whatever. He's, he's great at that. Yeah, though. he was like, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, and then he tried my father's olive oil, and he was so happy. I had a recipe for one day, but I wanted to make something new the mm. second day. And Celery then, root soup? Well, my wife was like, you need to make Ed's chicken curry sandwiches. So I'm like, okay, what does he make with them? Because that's cold. And she was like, celery root soup. I'm like, um, all right. That's so specific. Yeah, celery root is very weird looking. It looks yeah. like, it's like the root underneath the celery. Yeah. So it's all hairy. And you shave it off and cut it up and you cook it for like two hours and you Why blend it together. Why did she freaking sandwiches or something? Because I don't want to, because it, it was snowing oh. <laughs> in the East Coast and I wanted to give them a hot meal. I mean, I love we, you guys, but wow. <laughs> we, um, they shot like 
I was I didn't have to go to location, which was nice. Cause yeah. And I got out of having to help. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. So I just cooked the food, and then somebody came and picked it up, and I sent it back with them. Oh my god! Wow. Well. But I didn't eat for two days. Like that's the thing about cooking on set. I yeah. lost like five pounds in two days. I'm like, this is Jerk. great. I hate you. And my wife was like, no, that's not healthy. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> no, I don't care. Whatever. I didn't have to throw anything up. <laughs> I don't see I like the diet. downside. <laughs> So wait, I shoot you, for like four more days. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> are you originally from LA? Yeah, I'm from here. And so your wife is from the New East Jersey. Coast. Yeah. And she's <clears throat> she's Italian. She's right? Italian. You picked a good one. And a producer. Yeah, perfect. I mean, what yeah. else do you really need? Exactly. Let's be honest here. Let me marry somebody who will get me work. Yeah, perfect. Although we don't work together, we work together on things. But like, for instance, she she knows Tina. Mm-hmm. Um, separately in the way and we both know her mm-hmm. so she has worked on any woman me with tina and she's worked on juliet and um but i work with tina not because of my wife but because tina and i are also friends yeah so there's a lot of that where there's a lot of that we on. both are friends with certain people so we work together as opposed to hey hire my husband because he's a composer well okay because that's I, always awkward anyway yeah I, of course and she is. doesn't like to do it and i don't like to have her do well, it because it would be i'm like if they don't have anybody then, then mention refer that me. yeah that's cool. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. It's always a little awkward, like, when you're like, hey, hey, my husband, or hey, my, my wife. I know. But, um, shoot, what was I going to say? Wife, husband. Tell me a little bit about the process, though, like, of, like... Of cooking for 30 people? No. <laughs> just kidding. No. Of scoring... Of just scoring. Like, of scoring, like, of scoring, like, a general, like web series like for for example right now producing <coughs> you were cooking for them <clears throat> which is so great but what does it take like what is like the start to finish process so i'll watch usually i'll read the script beforehand and mm-hmm. sometimes i'll get ideas in my head reading the script um mm-hmm. if it's a particularly good script like i'll start to generate musical ideas but i wait until we have a cut and when the first a lot of times it's just a rough cut and i'll watch the rough cut I'll watch it a few times and then figure out where music needs to go and where it shouldn't go. Mm-hmm. And then I've had I've either had a conversation with the director or I'll have one about like what they like and what they don't like. Mm-hmm. Like like what instruments do you hear? And a lot of times with more often than not, directors will be like, You're the music guy, go. Yeah. I'm like, oh and so I'll write something and they're like, Oh, oh I don't like that. Do you use piano? I'm like, you don't like piano? No, I'm like piano at all. Why isn't there any guitar? Oh, so you like guitar. Yeah, I like guitar a lot. And cello. So I'm like, oh, this would have been helpful. Yeah. You have to, like, figure out... How you kind of have to lead them into the, that direction. It's part... I feel like it's part of my job because it happens so much. Um, yeah, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't think, honestly, to be like, oh, yeah, I hate I hate piano or I hate this or I hate that. Or sometimes you try things and then the director's like, yes, let's do that. And then we, we're both like, no, that doesn't work at all. Like, oh. Scrap it. And then you go in a direction you didn't know you were going to go in and you, you kind of got pushed that way by the... The footage by the video is but, it ever frustrating do you find like sometimes like there's certain certain projects that like take longer than you would yes you thought um it depends like I, occasionally i've had to write jazz which is always frustrating for me because it's not my forte mm-hmm. um but then i because i've done it before people are like i heard that jazz that you did it was really good like, yes crap of course <laughs> um th- i always feel like i'm ripping like out like hair and teeth like when i'm doing jazz it's like just like it's a hard process but if I'm writing, if someone's like, here's this horror film, score it. And like, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of on autopilot. Like, oh, I know exactly what to do. Um, it's frustrating when, like, director has one vision and maybe a producer has a different vision and then the other producer has a different vision. It's always and then they're like, you that. guys all need to get together yeah, and figure out what get, you want. I do wardrobe as well. And, like, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's the same, same idea. Problem. It's like everybody needs to, like, kind of compile like because when you get notes from every, every person, you're like, wait, yes. wait, wait, and they're all completely different. And you're like, Wait, hold on a second. Like, you guys are completely giving me a different look for the whole thing. Like, each person is giving me a different look. And I'm, I'm yeah, assuming and I've it's had the same happen. idea. I've had that happen, but not not too often. But then you have to have a moment where you're like, okay, look, like this isn't working because I can't please everybody. Yeah. So, so somebody has to take lead and, like, figure out. Someone has to be in charge and say, this is the note you're taking. Yeah, exactly. Um, because you also don't want to, like, take one note and then somebody else is unhappy and then you end up throwing stuff out and wasting time. Yeah. How long um, does it take? It depends on the project and how much time I have. Like, I'll play the video, and mm-hmm. then I'll just start... I'll usually just start writing. Like, I'll, I'll play stuff, and then 
things won't work, and then I, I do the erase it, and I'll go back and play something else, and until I find the one thing that sticks. Mm -hmm. So I work better with a deadline. If I don't have a deadline, I will throw everything out because I know, like, ah, plenty of time. I don't like that. No, I don't like that either. But if I have like one week to turn something in for them to listen to, I'm like, I don't like any of these, but should I have to pick one? So like, I'll go off and do something else for an hour, and then I'll come back and I'll listen and I'll go, oh, that part right there, that five seconds, I yeah. like that. So what can I do with that? And then expand it, and then you start like making it bigger. So I'll expand that and think, okay, that's working. What can I add with it? And then I'll pair. Um, it's like pairing food. Like I'll yeah. pair another instrument with it, and then, and then it all starts to come together. What instruments do you use like the most? Like what do you? What well, do you pair? I mean, everything is like done on a big piano keyboard. Mm -hmm. um, that's weighted, so it feels like a piano. But I have like really, really expensive samples that will trigger any instrument that you can think of. So I can trigger like an accordion, drums, acoustic guitar, bass, every like every string instrument in the orchestra, and they sample them like they will record them with a microphone and every single note and every permeation of every note, so that when they put them together on the keyboard, it sounds like you're playing. Um, so. Really, really, I'm playing piano like all the time because the everything time. is on a piano keyboard. Yeah. Even though I'm a guitar player, I just never get a chance to play guitar. You're sad. only, you're only. I mean, that's like what you're trained in is guitar, basically. It is, but when I took theory in college, they make you learn piano, and mm -hmm. then when I realized what I was gonna do for a job, I had to learn it. Yeah. Just so, it, yeah. like, I learned the theory, and then I learned guitar by ear first, and I played by ear and learned, and then I took lessons. Um, and I did the same thing with theory, with piano, I learned the theory first, but I always fall back on my ear when I'm writing. Yeah. It's always like what sounds good, and then later I figure out, like, oh, why doesn't that chord work? Oh, it's in the wrong key, like, and go backwards and do the, the math. And does it, I mean, do you like that process? Does, is that frustrating? Is it... The most frustrating part is starting, is when I'm standing there with no, music, no notes and it's blank. That's when I'm like, shit, what if the music doesn't come? This is the one time, like... Yeah, it just um, and it always comes. Knock on wood. Yeah. But then, then it's like, oh, okay, great. Like now it's now it's fun because now I have the hard part over. And then if you write one theme, then when you go to the next episode or further in, you're like, oh well, I just have to write a, like something that's similar to that, but for a different character. Mm -hmm. um, like Juliet is almost all piano, um, which has been I think like, I really noticed nice. that actually and then a little bit of strings, but very little and and it's been fun to write because it's very like stark piano and it's it's soft and it's moody which is the kind of music i like and the kind of shows i like to watch anyway yeah um and it's also probably really nice because you have that relationship with tina so you, you yeah. already know like what you can it's so, almost like you can play around with it a little bit more we just shot three and four yeah and she we were out of town till we didn't get back because of the storm until the Oh, ninth. Yeah, the and she needed episode three done by the 15th and it was the ninth and I was like oh, crap but oh so I did one pass and she gave me notes and I made a few changes and then she gave me like one more set of notes and a few changes and we were done it was like two days um, wow because like I already knew we already had themes for all the characters and I knew I'd watched the episode so I knew where we needed music and where we didn't can you um, imagine if that was episode one though that would have been really hard yeah it would have been hard even really though I've worked with her before, it would have been much more difficult because we would yeah. have had to find the voice. We already found the voice for the show, so it was easier to kind of jump back in. Yeah. Um, and I just finished four today. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So you just, you have a studio in your apartment? Yeah, we, and, yeah we're in a house and we have a room that's like an office slash studio. Nice. Um, yeah. Oh, my God. And so you so get I can to work, work from home. Yeah, I can work without pants, which is nice. No, yeah, working without pants and not dealing with traffic. That's yes, right. the not dealing with traffic thing is nice. I'm sure. Or I schedule meetings late enough. People are like, let's meet. I'm like, great, let's meet at 11.30. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I work. know. I love working for myself because I do exactly that. You can go to the grocery store at 9 o'clock in the morning and no one's there. Yeah, it's great. It's right. so great. I love that. And especially in LA, I love that even more. Like, I'm like, well, I don't have to deal with this traffic other than today when I was supposed to meet with you at 7. We have to do it at seven fifteen. So I, I know I have I have to meet my agent for lunch tomorrow in Santa Monica, and I'm like I'm, I'm like it doesn't matter what time it is. It's Friday in Santa Monica. Yeah, I was just gonna say like that's gonna be better. like let's meet at you should, four a.m. Do you want to spend the night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just leave from here. You're like all right, I'll just leave from here. Oh my god, that that's I'm sorry. Yeah, that sucks. And not like North Santa Monica. Like we have to go. I have to like meet him by the promenade. Of course. Or like, yeah. Because North it would just be <sighs> yeah. No.
Are you, so you're from LA originally, like LA proper? Or? Yeah, um, I grew up in Rosemead, just next to Pasadena. Oh, okay. Um, and then when I went to college in New Mexico, my parents oh. like lived here, but then after I graduated high school, they bought a house in Albuquerque because oh. they wanted to get out of the city. Oh, okay. Um, Albuquerque's nice. I would never want to live there, but it's still too small. Yeah. I was in Albuquerque before Breaking Bad made it famous. It was weird to watch that show because, because I knew. Said, yeah. I was like, that's a coffee shop, not a biker bar. <laughs> oh um, that show made me want to go to New Mexico. They do bus tours now of Breaking Bad locations. Really? I remember in the first or second season when no one else was watching it, and I went back there with Allison and and I was showing her places, like, oh, this is where that was shot. And, this, and no one else was, Breaking Bad wasn't that popular yeah. then. Yeah. Oh, my God. How was that not that popular back then? I, I just, like, because yeah, I, I, I started watching, either. like, the last, I mean, like, I obviously started watching the whole thing from the beginning. But I started watching the very last season because my boyfriend got me into it. Mm -hmm. He was like, you have to watch the show. Like, I just got into it. It's so good. And mm -hmm. it's just amazing. I think you would love it. And I was like, eh, whatever. Like, I don't think so. Especially with everybody else in the world is telling you, you're like, you're almost, you, you almost want to butt against. You don't want to like it. Yeah. yeah. You're like, it's too much like pressure. That. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm like, what if I don't like it? And, um, I, I watched the first episode and I was like completely hooked. Like, I was like, oh my God, I love this show. Like, and I just kept watching and watching and watching and watching. And it, it's like, it made me want to go to New Mexico. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I had no desire to go whatsoever before. No offense to New it's Mexico. It's nice to visit. But, yeah, I just, it was just not, you know, it's not, like, on your top ten. Right. Exactly. And UNM's a good school. I actually first went to school in Colorado and Denver. I was living in Denver, and I went oh, to nice. school there and Denver's then transferred beautiful. to, it is. It's yeah. still, again, it's not L.A., so yeah. I needed to get back. It was way too rural and cowboyish for me. Yeah. Up and, um, but I missed hiking there. And then I went to New Mexico, but when I went to UNM, I knew, like, once I finish here, I have to get back to L.A. Because yeah. it's the only place I can do my job. I was going to say. Like, which is, is kind of is, ridiculous, but it's No, true. like, I was, no, but, you know, is that really a thing there? Like, you know, I mean, you, you don't have that opportunity like you do in L.A. Oh, yeah, to, like, and when you tell people there, shows. they're like, you want to do what? Write music for movies? Okay. Yeah, like, ha ha. I know. Like, I might as well have said I want to be in a heavy metal band. Yeah. Because that would have had more. It would have been like, oh, all right. Um, <laughs> yes. Wow. Okay, so... Does your love for tacos come from New Mexico? No, it comes LA? from here. So I have to ask you, and I'm really hoping that you save my taco truck. Okay. So I'm not going <laughs> to That's a lot of pressure because you're not going to tell me. I had Kobe I got, last night on the Fox lot. You had what? Kobe tacos on the Fox lot. Last okay. Night. I'm not I'm not saying anything until you answer all, right. all of these questions. Okay? All right. Top five taco trucks of LA. Does it have to be a truck? It doesn't have to be okay. a truck. But so, I'm saying, like, I basically, let me just rephrase that. Top five taco places. In L.A. In L.A., go. Cacao in Eagle Rock. Okay. Um, they have a lot of, like, gourmet tacos. At oh. one point they had rabbit, which was really, really, really what? good. I know, I tell people that. Actually, we should go there People are either like, taco. oh my god, rabbit's great, or they're like, gross. No, I, yeah. I'm Italian. I yeah. eat everything. <laughs> um, it's fine. They actually stopped selling rabbit because a vegan place across the street complained. But, but, they, that's not but they sell duck confit and, and um, oxtail. So. But that's not the, the vegan place complaint. The, that's complaint not just about the rabbit. The rabbit was too far. I know I wanted to go over and pick at them. But that's so cacao and Eagle Rock. Okay, um, Ricky's, Ricky's Fish Tacos. Ricky has the best fish tacos I've ever had. They're, they're huge. He goes, wow, he gets the fish from Mexico and he has his own special batter and he batters them and Where fries is this? them. Is this like He's in Chinatown right now. He had a little... He had a stand um, on Virgil in um, Los Feliz. Okay. And then another taco shop down the street complained to the food department, then had him had him move. So he moved to Chinatown, and he has. He's open on the weekends, and he okay. always runs out. Like, he'll start serving in, uh, <coughs> at noon, yeah. and he's out by, like, 2.30 or 3 o'clock. Okay. All right. Okay, so... So, wait. We just... We said cacao. Ricky's. We said Ricky's. <coughs> um, tacos Los Anaya. Which is on Adams and like Crenshaw. Okay. Um, and it's a little place owned by three brothers. All right. And I, Ed and I have lunch there. It's like our place. It's the only place we ever um, eat. That's adorable. No, although I went there with some other guy. Oh, <gasps> <gasps> slut! I did. Oh my god! And um, it's on camera. We're it gonna, is. Oh my god! You know god. who I took with Rob Paget from? Um, you took Rob there. Yes. Oh my god! You took Rob there. <laughs> oh, the triangle. 
It is. Well, Rob and I have never had tacos together, which oh is my crazy God, because he's in my wedding. I'm so... Rob was in your wedding? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh my God, I love Rob. Yeah, I Rob's love great. Tanya. Tanya and they're I both actually... Great. Oh my God, they're the best. Tanya and I have coffee um, down around the corner from my house. Oh, cool. We have them over for dinner like once a month or they're so. They're the best. Like, yeah. I like absolutely love them so much. Um, like... She was. She actually uh, complimented me at the IWTV. Like she was watching the live stream, mm -hmm. uh, the time we went, and she like tweeted. No, she, did she tweet me, or she either tweeted me or she messaged me before we had actually met because we only knew each other through. She series. went last year too, right? Not this. No, one no, no. She did. Oh, they didn't go. Because the one last year she didn't. Yeah, she didn't go to. But she. I think she treated me and she's like, oh my god, I love your shoes. And that was before I, I knew that it was like being live streamed. I was like, how does she Here. know? Where is she? You Where stand up and you around. Huh? It was really funny. Anyway, um, okay. Um, so you went to, okay, Cacao, uh, Ricky's, what was the last name? Los Anayas. Los Anayas. Um, that you cheated on with, uh, with Paget. Um, I'm so excited. Okay, I'm like really waiting for this. Tacos. Uh, tacos. tacos is really good. Tacos has the like, they, their tortillas are, are reasonable enough for going because there's a little lady in the corner that makes them from scratch. Okay. So when they bring you tortillas to the table, they were literally came from 20 feet away. That's um, amazing. But they have good like crunchy, slightly greasy, like the fried yeah, yeah, tacos. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have that's one more. four. Ooh. Oh my god. Um, oh my god, I'm freaking out right I've now. I've been on multiple taco crawls, so it's hard to... to um, I like, I'm um, like praying. It's going to have to be... Mariscos Jaliscos. Damn it! <laughs> Damn it, you didn't even mind at all! Okay. Mariscos Jaliscos is on Olympic and they have these shrimp tacos where they're fried inside and then they pour sauce and avocado on top and you eat it almost like a tostada. Okay. And they're, they're kind of amazing. But that's just, you only gave me five, so. Okay. So go ahead. Mine, I don't know if you've ever been there, but I really, really, really like El Chato. Oh, I have been to El Chato. Do you like uh, it? Yeah, I do. I but like, it, love it. But where, it's not... Where's it located? It's on Olympic and... Not Fairfax. It's a little bit past. Yeah, it's, it's like... It's very like, good. There's like Taco Row right over there. Yeah, but I really like that place. And I, I like all of their other Mexican food, too. It's really good, but... I, I did a crawl with some friends and we hit 16 places in one day. Oh, my God. So why do you love tacos so much? It was... I've always liked them and I've always made them at home. And then I started tweeting about it at one point. Yeah. Um, and people were like, dude, you have tacos all the time. And I was like, no, I don't. And then I thought, oh, I have them at least once a week. So I started tweeting every time I had them. And then I, subconsciously, I started eating them more. And, so, <laughs> and then it became this huge thing. They were like, it's the taco guy. And so then there was this so obligation the to guy. like try different tacos. So you're like the taco musician. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, you should change your Twitter name. For the that taco day. musician. Yeah. Hey, the taco musician man. It's That's... in my bio. Yeah. Um, so I did a crawl with friends, mm -hmm. and then in LA, and then we did a second crawl where we went to less places. We mm -hmm. tried to go for quantity, quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. And then one of our friends, his uncle, lives in Tijuana and has a huge house, and so we went to, to TJ and did a two-day taco crawl on TJ, and those were the most amazing tacos I've ever had in my life. Wow. There was a chef there who trained, who trained like under a French chef and he made sauces. So they were sauce tacos. So there was a taco with like ground beef wrapped in cheese that was slightly fried. And then he had strawberry pineapple sauce that went over the top and like pecans. And when it came out of the uh, plate, I was like, this is a little gross. Yeah. <clears throat> but I was like, screw it, I'm gonna try it. It was amazing. Oh my God. That sounds like so- All the flavors like went together so well, but yeah. Wow. I, I trust you because you, you know tacos very well. like. I wouldn't normally pick something like that. I wouldn't either. But I thought, you know, like, I'm here. Yeah, I'm you might as well. I'm not going to get this back in L.A. Okay, New um, York. Um, in you went Hoboken. To, if, you went to, if you went to Tijuana, you have to tell me, like... Hoboken you... has a place called East L.A. Okay. That must be somebody who used to live in, like, East L.A. Because yeah. the tacos taste like other tacos. Okay. But like they come on a plate. They look, they look like street tacos. They have really good food. Um, there's a place called The Taco Truck. Mm -hmm. And they have a like shop, and then they have a truck, and they're in Hoboken, and they're really good too. Okay. Um, and then there's a place called Superior in Brooklyn that um, it's really good. Yeah, it's really good. That I went to with Brandon Martinez, who used to be like big in the web community. He was an agent. Oh, 